Hey guys, uh, thanks for checking out my video. Uh, what I wanted to kind of walk through today is why I am a huge fan of the Dell PowerEdge R620. Two USB on the front, SD card, DVD drive, VGA on the front, tongue to get the service tag, and an 8th drive backplane. Very cool. It's very dense for a 1U format, but let's take a look inside. So, why I like it is because of its expandability and it's a very scalable server for a home lab environment or a small business, medium business. You see it rain all over the place, and there's a reason for that. What I want to first look at is the backplane. You have two different backplanes. You have this one, which is a four-bay backplane, right? SAS or SATA drive. And it only uses one SAS cable, which runs along the back. To the RAID controller, which we'll see in a second. This one here has an, a dual backplane to handle eight drives, and you can see that. And if you get one for yourself and it has a four bay backplane, you don't have to get an entire new server, you can just upgrade a few components to get the expanded capability. You need to get one, the backplane, and you need to get a new set of RAID cables. Now, one of the things that I really like that they did with this is that you have these little, little lift arms here that control where the cables go. So remove the windshield here. And you can see that they run alongside so the planner board the DVD drive you can just run across and they connect they follow the line here and we're back and they connect in here so you have your SATA cable you have an additional power port and you have a whole bunch of capacitors don't really fuck around with those on the other side you have your SAS cable it's really one cable, so it's got two SAS connectors for the back plane, but it runs along the back into the RAID controller port. In this case, this has an H710P with a RAID battery that connects in, and it's just an overall very scalable capable unit. So the H710P has a 1 gig cache module on it. And it's very easily hot swappable if you decide that you want to run an H310 or various other RAID controllers. The H710P and the H310 are both flashable to IT mode. And what that means is that you can get one of these and try Proxmox or Unraid. And if you wanted to create ZFS pools on an Unraid or a TrueNAS environment, you can flash the RAID controller to get the the capability to do that. On the flip side, if you did not want to do that, and you wanted to keep it in a more traditional environment, you leave it as is, and you could install whatever you want. You could put Ubuntu on here, you could put Microsoft Windows on here, you could put various flavors of Linux, you could put VMware on here. And one of the cool things about VMware is that Dell puts out customized ISO images with all of the drivers preset for you. So you don't have to go mucking around and installing VMware and then trying to find the RAID drivers and then trying to find certain drivers for various things. Oh, my NIC board on the back's not being found or my PCI risers, my cards connected to those aren't being identified. Well, Dell takes care of them. And that's another reason why I'm a huge fan of it. And what's very interesting is that, at least at this video, 
uh, Dell just put out uh, ESXi uh, version 8 uh, VMware hypervisor image and guess what you can install it no problem on an R620 so if we look at the design here we can see we just talked about the backplane and the RAID controller a little bit there we can see that we have six fans hot swappable which means that in the event that you need to replace a fan it's very easy you can do it while it's turned on not to say that I've ever had a fan going on me I haven't and I've been in the field for about 20 years over 20 years but in the event that a fan goes you don't have to shut it down you can just lift the lid pull out the one that is damaged or broke replace it close the lid and away you go another really cool thing that I like about the hardware on our R620 server is the amount of RAM slots if we think about the 11th generation Dells they didn't have as many they had 18 on the 620s you have 24 so what does that mean to you scalability room to grow you don't have to immediately get everything all at once you can accumulate it over time as you grow and I think that's one of the biggest reasons why I love this server is because you can pick it up relatively cheap from the various markets or whatever and then it lets you grow with it and I'm not even talking about just the fact that you can upgrade the RAM I'm talking about the fact that you can also upgrade the processors these things support uh, v0 and v2 uh, you can't get v3 or v4 and for the ram you can support uh, ddr3 and you can't use ddr4 in here in this case here we're using 16 gig dual rank 12800 ecc ram so it's going to show up as a 1.6 gigahertz bus speed you can get faster um, this supports up to 14 1400 1400 R I have one I gotta look double check and you can throw those in here uh, but depending on what you want is really where you, you want to look to go so if you want to have a, a high uh, if you're going to be doing maybe AI or machine model learning you're probably going to want to have more of a dense RAM footprint and then it makes sense to boost to the highest uh, frequency RAM that you can. Maybe get 32 gig sticks and then fill it out as needed. But for day to day, you know, personal home lab use, I think even the 10 600s, I think, would suffice. I don't know if people would agree with me on that, but that's my opinion. And I think that makes sense. It's easily upgradable. To get to the, the CPU, it's two screws. Bang, bang. You take that off, and that'll get you access into the uh, the CPU on the board. And if you give me one second, we can go ahead and take a look and see what that looks like. So we'll just go ahead and take this out. Very easy to do. And that'll get you access to the heat sink. You can see that they have some copper to help dissipate the heat along the block here. And if we take this, put this on, you can see the CPU here. And if you want to take a look, there's two ways that you can find out what it is. One is to look at the, the service tag on the front here. So if we pull out the tongue, again, I have giant hands and everything is a pain in the ass for me. We can see the service tag here. That's one way to get the CPUs. But another way you can get the CPUs is to take the heat sink off and just brush it. Brush away some of that thermal paste you can take a look and see exactly what you have so if you get it second hand and you're not 100 percent sure you can see that these here are running 
2620 V2, 2.10 gigahertz. And I believe those are, I think those are, these are six core chips. And what does that really mean? Well, that means that the six core chips um, have hyper threading support. So they're really 12 logical vCPUs. So with both, that means that you have 24 logical cores. And I will point out that when you are doing a home lab or running a home lab, it's not going to be the CPU that's going to be your bottleneck. It's not. It's going to be your RAM and it's going to be your storage. So don't cheap out. Now, one of the other things I do recommend is that if you do take off the thermal gel or thermal paste, you just pull a little bit back. You don't need to go crazy. In this case here, I'm using an MX4 thermal compound from Micro Center. Huge fan of Micro Center. And when we go to put it back, you want to take a note. So you see how it has the little arm, the little peg sticking out a little further here? Well, that just means it goes on this side. And I think I might be wrong. Let's see. Yep, I'm wrong. Not the first time, won't be the last time. So if you see the little pegs here, the pegs actually go this way. Right. You'll know that it's flush because you can tell it's seated in. And you just take your drill. In this case, my extremely old ready. And you just screw it back in. Easy peasy. There are some really good CPUs for this uh, model server. The R620, which is another reason why I'm a big fan of it. But if we continue down the path here... Let's pull this guy out a little bit. And I should just kind of flip it. What do we got? Well, we got a few things cooking on the back. One, we can immediately see that this is missing a riser. So this has three risers with it. This is going to be your low profile. Low profile means that the brackets are smaller. This one doesn't have them. Well, I have one for you. So low profile bracket. This guy here. And a high profile bracket is this guy here. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're shopping for parts. There are a lot of parts that you can upgrade to this uh, model here. So if we wanted to take this guy out, we could. And you can see that that opens us up to additional capabilities. So what they have are multiple PCI riser boards off the board. And you can get these various components. There's different kinds that you can get. You can see that this one here is a PCI 8X. We'll put this guy back. It's an easy right here is your quad nick card notice that you have screws here what does that mean you can pop it out very if you need to upgrade it or what have you and then over here you have another riser you can't see the whole thing right here and then they have these little tabs here you just kind of rock it back and forth don't pull too hard because you can break it and you can see here that this has the intrusion uh, detector error message uh, unit and essentially what this does is if you take the lid off it barks so when you put the lid on this is uh, depressed in so it will sh let it know that the motherboard you know, the, the sorry the uh, lid is on the server now this is a high profile slot here and what you can do is put in various NIC cards or upgrade cards but if you find a low profile graphic card, um, NVIDIA makes some, you can pop one in here, being that's a high profile. I want to 
show some examples. So just get it there with me. Huh? So there's two. There's some. Here's an example of a car that you can upgrade. This is a. Uh, you can see the part number. It's an XP0NY. Uh, essentially, it is a. It's an Intel uh, dual NIC car. And that's one example. And another example is this guy here which is an Intel X540T2. I got it right in the first try. That doesn't always happen. And this is a 10 gig card, which we can see reference here. Uh, if I can get it right, come on now. And it's an RJ45 10 gig. Not that expensive to get. Your biggest expense if you want to upgrade to 10 gig isn't going to be the cards. It's going to be the switch. And if you do decide to make that jump, make sure that whatever you get is going to play nice together. So, the last thing that I want to talk about from hardware perspective are the power supplies. Again, hot swappable, same as the previous generations. They come in two flavors. I think it's a 495 and a 750. 495s are good, but they're going to limit what CPUs you'll be able to use in the machine. So keep that in mind. If you want to upgrade some of the CPUs to the better versions, maybe the V2s on the higher end of the spectrum, which require a, a bit more juice to run, the 495 watts won't cut it. You want to look for the 750 watts. Um, try to get it out of the gate. Otherwise, it's an added expense. But at the same time, if you can save money up front and upgrade slower over time, absolutely nothing wrong with that. One of the other things that I'll say in closing here about this server is that they did a good job with this. A lot of people don't realize it, but it does serve a purpose. Not only does it keep things tidy, but if we can zoom in right here, we can see that it labels all the RAM slots for us. So in, in the event that you have an issue with a RAM dim, and it tells you when you boot it up, you don't have to go crazy reading it on the board. You can, right? I don't know if how good you're gonna be able to see this. You can, it's not impossible. You see how this one has a an A2, and then this one is a A9, and then the one next to it's A5. You can definitely read it off of the motherboard, but I find it's very, very easy. It's much easier if you just look at it on this thing. And it helps keep your system running as efficient as possible. So I hope this helps uh, anybody out there in the community that's looking for a home lab server. Um, and this is one of the reasons why I'm a big fan of the R620 from Dell. It is a it's a powerhouse, very scalable unit, very low form factor. And in the next video that I do where I power it on and walk through the various capabilities from there... Um, you'll see some additional reasons why I love it. It's extremely quiet and it's very capable from an operating system and software perspective as well. Thanks for checking out my video. Have a good day.